Uh, okay, everyone, just a quick introduction to Deer ID. This isn't a full introduction that's going to cover everything and make you 100% proficient in deer identification, but what it will do is give you some of the pointers that will help you when it comes to identifying one of the six species of deer that you'll talk about on your level one uh, visual assessment. Okay, now the first thing you need to do before you try and identify a deer is not to look at the deer. Consider the environment. The environment's there to help you. So don't just look at the deer. Look for features on the deer, certainly, but also consider the environment. For example, if you see snow, snow is a really good indicator. It's probably the highlands of Scotland, and the species that they might be talking about is going to be the red deer. Okay, so if we're going to be looking at these deer, uh, you might already know what the deer species is, but don't jump in. Look for key features that will be on these deer that will help you identify them. Okay, look for features like maybe a white belly. Some deer have a white belly, that can help you. Other features that are quite prominent and very obvious. There's a black horseshoe around the caudal part patch of this uh, deer. There's also a big, thick black stripe down the tail. And the tail on this deer is clearly quite a long tail. The deer, if you look at the flank of the deer towards the right, it has spots, but it also has a stripe. If you look at the face of the deer, there's no obvious bony ridges or black markings. There are other markings that could help give it away. But the features you've got there already would indicate that those are fallow deer. Okay, fallow deer, pretty easy to recognise. Now, if we're looking at deer and there's snow in the picture, snow in the picture straight away tells you, as part of the environment, that it's probably the highlands of Scotland. The deer species you're going to find up on the hills in the highlands of Scotland is red deer. Now, if you look at these deer, there's a few features that will tell you straight away the reds. First of all, they're very large and they're in a herd. They've got antlers. Straight away we know they're male deer. Only the male deer have antlers. And if we look at the front of these deer, they've got a big thick neck which is caused because of a mane. And there's only two species of deer have a mane, the red deer and the seca deer. Now these deer have quite a brackish uh, red flank. They're up on the hills and the highlands of Scotland. They've got big manes and also a lighter patch running up onto the back. A big sort of yellowy orange bum that runs right up onto the back. Straight away, it has to be red deer. That caudal patch, that marking on the back of the deer, that orangey yellow patch running off the back is guaranteed to be red deer only. Okay? But you can see the very large antlers, much larger than any antlers of any other deer we'd be talking about. Now, when we think about looking back at this deer, the key features are obvious. Having thought about what we know, we've got a white belly, a big stripe down the side of deer, down its flank, we've got spots, and we've got a big long tail. Big long tail. And looking at that straight away, we should be thinking, fallow deer. Okay, fallow deer. We need to get that one in our heads. But having a look at this little guy, a bit different, a bit strange, it's not always what you see in the picture that's going to help you. Maybe it's what you don't see. And if you look around this picture, there's something this deer hasn't got that some other deer definitely have that's quite prominent. And this deer does not have a tail. It has a bit of white on its bum. The two deer you'd associate with a bit of white on the bum are probably going to be Roe and Sika deer both of which will fluff the rump patch out if alarmed and disturbed. But having a look at this deer, there's other features that can help you identify it. If we look towards the face, there's a big black muzzle. And that big black muzzle makes two prominent white spots stand out and a white moustache that he's got below those two white spots. If we look at the ears of the deer, they're defined with a black rim. They've got a big black rim around them. And the antlers of the deer are very small in velvet in winter. Only one species of deer usually grows its antlers during the winter months. And that's the roe deer. And the roe deer is quite an easy deer to recognise because of these features. No tail, white spots on the face, big black muzzle, black rim deers. Now, there's something a little bit different. It's short, it's stocky, it's very rat-like, with black markings on the face. This deer has black stripes that run up the inside of very defined, very large pedicles. And a deer that's short and stocky like this could only ever be the muntjac deer. It looks a bit like a rat. Now the good thing about Moonjack deer to identify them is the black facial markings are very, very obvious. Now in the females, they don't have black stripes that run up the inside of pedicles. They don't have pedicles. But they do have a black diamond on the head. And that black diamond is very defined and very easy to, to recognise and see. But look for this curved back, very short, very stocky, very heavy set deer. Okay, they're very small. But having a look at his antlers, Moonjack are best described as having short hooked antlers. This little guy is a pet deer. He's been looked after in a park environment or a pet environment. And he's been fed lots and lots of stuff that's allowed him to grow very large antlers. But if we look closely, they have a very big cow-like nose. Okay? They've also got a very defined suborbital gland. And when we think about the antlers, quite often the pedicles of muntjac deer are longer than their antlers. And their antlers are often quite uh, a bit shorter than their pedicles. Now, having a little think back to some basics about deer ID. If we look at the bum of these deer, you can see there's a defined horseshoe and a very thick black stripe that runs down the tail. 
But more importantly on these deer, we mentioned the white belly. That's not always there, it's not always a good guide if you can't see the belly and stuff. But it is there, you can see that on these deer. But the antlers of these deer make it obvious they could only be one species that we'd be talking about. They've got wide, flattened, palmated antlers. Some of those antlers along the back have spellers. The spellers are the back points along the palmation of the antler. And these deer are quite large and in a herd. They would have to be fallow bucks. Okay? Very easy to recognise if you remember these key features, but you've got to look for the features. Of course, remember the environment. You've got quite an open environment where herding species like to, to congregate. But here's something a little different. We've got a deer with black velvet. Definitely male deer, they've got antlers. But we've got a deer with black velvet. There is the evidence of spots down the flank. They've got a grey belly. They also look very angry when they look straight towards you. A deer that looks angry and has a prominent UV frown when it looks towards you could only ever be the seeker deer. Another feature that might stand out is a prominent white gland on the back of the hawk, the metatarsal gland. Best described as being two inches white or pale grey. When we think about these deer and the back end of them, sometimes people confuse them with fallow deer. They see a little black ruff that runs around the edge of the, the coral markings and they think it's a horseshoe. It's not. It's a black ruff. It's not too dissimilar to that, but what we're looking for is certainly the other features of this deer. Don't go on the bum alone. Look for all these different features that are going to help you out, certainly the black belt, the angle of the antlers, all the features that you can see there that are different to fallow deer. Look out for the contrasting information. It will help you get them right. Okay? But, what about this? We've got a deer that's a very soft, sandy pastel colour. Its hind legs are longer than its forelegs. And although you might not see it very easily, there is a canine that's very prominent in the side of the mouth there. Now, there's only two species of deer that have prominent canine teeth, the muntjac and the Chinese water deer. And we looked at the muntjac before, and it has a sort of completely different profile, like a little brown rat. Whereas this is a soft, sandy pastel colour, big back legs, big hind legs. It has to be a Chinese water deer, and because of that prominent tusk, it's definitely a buck. But moving on a little bit, hopefully you'll have a look at that. You'll see a very light-coloured deer. There is evidence of spots and a stripe and a very long tail. It's also got a very pronounced long tassel. The deer species that has the longest of the tassels is going to be the fallow deer. Other features that you might see on this deer will help you out. If you look at the antlers, you can see a really big curve to the antlers. They've got brow tines. Only two species of deer have very defined brow tines like that that are large. The red deer and the fallow deer. Seeker deer don't have brow tines that stick out forward. They all sweep backwards. But we're looking at that deer and it's got a smooth face. There's no big UV frown. It doesn't look angry when it looks towards you. And the best way of describing fallow when they look towards you is a bit thick. They look a bit thick. But having a look at these guys, you've got two young deer. They're spikers. They've got big manes. So only two species of deer have a mane, the red deer and the seeker deer. But what's more important on these deer that really stands out is that orangey-yellow patch running up onto the back. And we talked about this before. Only one species of deer has a very prominent back end, and that would be the red deer. Very easy to recognise when you remember these key features. But they're good-looking boys. They're good-looking stags. Now having a look at these, these are different. Okay, We don't have any traditional brow ties. don't sweep out over the brow as such. They sweep all backwards. We've got evidence of spots but no stripes. A grey belly. This isn't a horseshoe. The collar marking doesn't display a big horseshoe and a thick black stripe down the tail. But what we do have is a very defined UV frown. A very defined UV frown. On the deer on the left you can see very, very dark velvet. Very black velvet. Something you might also be able to see, might not be too easy, but do look out for it please, is thumbprints in the ears of Sika deer. And these are most definitely Sika deer. They have an inky black thumbprint quite often in the corner of the rear. Something that in nice clear pictures is very easy to see. But we can't see the metatarsal gland on these deer in this picture. So don't always rely on one feature or two. Try and get the whole range of features per deer and try and remember them if you can. But having a look at these deer, it's not entirely obvious straight away what they are. But we talked about the environment. And part of the environment that will really help you is considering where they're going to be. And you've got heather and you've got rocks. And if you think about where you're going to find heather and rocks, it's going to be the highlands of Scotland. Now, this is a group of stags, although you can't see antlers on some of these deer. And all that's happened is they're casting their antlers. It's that time of year. But you can see the manes on these deer. Okay, so do look out for manes. It's quite obvious they're stags. But when we think about this guy, he's obvious. 
wide flat and palmated antlers, big waggy tail, a very, very pronounced horseshoe. Okay, a lovely black horseshoe, very easy to recognise. Of course, the smooth face, the brad tines, the palmated antlers, straight away we know it's a fallow deer. You don't even need to look out for the spots and the stripe and other bits and pieces. But having a little look at a little scruffy deer, even though it's not the best picture, a little curved back, short, scruffy, looks a bit like a rat. What do you think it's going to be? I've got my suspicions. I wonder what you think it is. Any ideas what this might be? An anal tush is not a tail. Only one species has that pronounced anal tush. But we do have white spots, a white moustache and a big black muzzle with black rimmed ears. I wonder what that could be. Having a think about this picture, a herding species could only be one of three. Highlands of Scotland, we've got heather and rocks. Shouldn't be too bad. I wonder what they are. Any idea with those V-stripes leading to large pedicles? Quite a short, stocky deer. Very brown, very rat-like in profile. Nice little group of deer. Anal tush, white bone. White throat markings, the gorget patch. Which piece of deer has a gorget patch? Shouldn't be too bad to recognise. Of course, he's not going to be that bad now, knowing what we know. We've got lovely long pedicles and antlers that are a little bit shorter than those pedicles. And of course, a deer with no tail in winter in velvet. Soft, sandy, pastel colour. Black nose, black button eyes, furry ears. Looks a bit like a teddy bear. The deer species associated with reed bed habitats. Soft, sandy, pastel colour. Hind legs that are longer than four legs. Shouldn't be too bad to get that one. And an angry deer with a mane, only one of two, looking at us, very angry, wants to punch us in the face. Shouldn't go too wrong with that one. And I'm pretty sure you'll have no trouble with that one. Big palmated antlers. Spots, evidence of a stripe and a white bell. Okay guys, that's just a short introduction into deer ID. And although we haven't covered a big, big range of pictures, we've had a good look at the start points that you need to think about. And of course, do remember, we need to look at the environment first. Try and look out for those key features of the environment that will help you identify the species. So if we're thinking about snow, it's the highlands of Scotland, okay? Just like heather and rocks. Little things like that. Reed bed habitats could only be the Chinese water deer. And look out for those key features we've talked about. Look for any spots, stripes, any white patches on the, the muzzle, around the face, a soft sandy pastel colour perhaps, or hind legs that are longer than the forelegs. Anything like this will help you out. And it is practice and repetition, guys. The more you look at these pictures, go online, look on Google. That's where I've stole most of these from. It'll help you out. So go and have a look. Don't be afraid to practice. Ta-da!